welcome back to Macabre London's Abhorrent Advent Calendar. As you'll be aware if you've already joined me for the past 13 episodes, I'm counting down the days until Christmas, but not in the usual joyful way you may expect. Instead, I'll be telling you 24 gruesome stories until we hit Christmas Day, when you'll receive a full-length episode of Macabre London as your hideous Christmas present from me to you. Under door number 13, we learned about the mischievous Yule lads of Iceland, who enjoy making the run-up to Christmas even more stress-inducing than it was already. Today, we're staying in Iceland to learn about a few more Icelandic horrors that have now been banned for being too scary. Today, under door number 14, we meet Grilla, Lepaludi, and the Yule cat, Yola Katurin. <laughs> During the harsh winters in Iceland, where the daylight hours are as short as just four hours per day, the techniques for keeping kids that are cooped up at home on the straight and narrow have been amped up to impressive heights. Yesterday, we learned about the Yule Lads who terrorise children and adults alike with their mischievous pranks on the 13 days leading up to Christmas, but over the whole of the year, there's a far worse trio to contend with. A pair of giant trolls keep watch all year over bad children, and their actions are far worse than just stealing your sausages or slamming doors whilst you drop off into peaceful slumber. Grilla and Lepaludi are the parents of the Yule Lads, and luckily their children are far nicer than they are, as I think 13 nights of the couple's behaviour would easily decimate the future of Iceland, as their main tactic is to eat children. The hideous and gigantic Grilla is a year-round presence in Icelandic folklore, but as it gets closer to Christmas, the threat of her looms over naughty children in the same way it does for good children when they look forward to the arrival of Santa. Sneaking into the town from her ice cave in the mountains, Grilla will observe children going about their business with their families. If a naughty child is spotted, Grilla will approach the parent in charge and beg them to hand over their child so she can take it and relieve them of the burden. Should the parent wish to fight off the tyrannous troll, then they must give her something to eat other than the fresh child meat, or chase her until she runs out of the town, but she'll always return to try again. Grilla's husband, Lepaludi, is said to be incredibly lazy. He sits at home in their cave, waiting for Grilla to bring back the bags full of naughty children for their dinner, and he doesn't even help with the cooking. The household favourite dinner is stew made from live children, but sometimes Grilla can't wait to simmer the youngsters, and may just eat a few before they make it into the pan. You may think that it's just children that are under threat from the hideous troll beasts, but there's another creepy Christmas monster that preys upon adults too. The most boring present of all may just save your life if you're wandering around in the mountains of Iceland, if you bump into Grilla and Lepaludi's pet cat, Yola Katurin. The Yule Cat, as he's also known, likes to roam around waiting for people to cross his path. Huge in stature, this black cat will ask if you've received an item of clothing before Christmas Day, and if you've not, he'll eat you. If you say yes, then you'll be allowed to leave without issue. As with most folklore, there's a practical reason for the amped up horror tales that plague the Icelanders in December and over the years the scare factor was really amped up by the need to make sure certain rules were adhered to. Or just like the virulent trolls, a serving of instant death may just be on the cards. Due to the importance of substantial clothing over the winter period, the Yule Cat is said to remind farm workers to make sure they've cleaned and stored the wool from the autumn shearing, which provides the town with much needed warm woolly jumpers, socks and hats so they don't die from exposure. The traits of yesterday's tale, the Yule Lads, all have unique names to remind people to tidy their houses, make sure their pantries are stocked for the winter, and to stockpile candles so they're able to light their homes during the intense and long dark days. Grilla and Lepaludi are a warning to children to stay on the straight and narrow, or else they may just end up with more to worry about than a grim cold winter an effective threat to a boisterous child on a freezing cold day when there is no escape from home without being treated to snow upon snow. However, there is a slight difference between a playful warning and downright terror. 
and when parents took the stories too far, the government stepped in to calm things down and to put an end to children not sleeping for months on end due to the threat of a gigantic troll appearing at the foot of their bed, ready to shove them in a bag and drag them to a cave to be boiled alive if they didn't get eaten along the way as a travel snack. In 1746, after children were becoming too terrified to leave their homes as a result of the effective scare tactics imposed upon them by their overzealous telling of the Griller tale, the government passed a law which banned scaring children with stories. The subsequent years saw Griller killed off, but the Yule lads remained. However, like all good horror villains, she respawned and has been slowly regaining popularity with Icelanders and the rest of the world alike. So in the countdown to Christmas, you may just want to begin following the rules of the Yule Lads and start getting your house in order, your food stocked up, and make sure you've got socks on your Christmas list, as otherwise Griller and her family will be after you. And I've heard she's feeling a little peckish. Thank you for joining me for door number 14 of the Macabre London Abhorrent Advent Calendar. What do you think about Griller and the stories being banned? Let me know in the comments below. I'll be back tomorrow with door number 15, so make sure you join me then. Please like, comment, rate, review, share and subscribe on whatever platform you're enjoying this on, and come and say hi on my social media. And don't forget to tell your friends if you think they'd enjoy the Advent Calendar. If you'd like to help support the show, then you can do so by signing up to my Patreon, buying a gift from the Amazon wishlist, or making a one-off donation via the Acast supporter link. The links for all of these are in the show notes and description. And a huge thanks to all of our patrons. Thanks for joining me. I've been Nikki Drews, and I'll see you for door number 15 tomorrow. <laughs>